Hello again folks and welcome to another screencast and this particular screencast is still looking at biomechanics and we're going to be discussing aspects of linear motion in particular graphs and how to draw graphs and how to describe graphs of linear motion. Now as we discussed in the last screencast linear motion 1 we were talking about the linear motion descriptors and these play an important part in the next step that we're going to be discussing on this screencast of linear motion as the examiner may ask you to do one of two things they may ask you to draw a graph based on a table or some data that they've given you or some things you need to calculate or they may ask you to describe a graph and the way we're going to use the linear motion descriptors is in the description of the graph Primarily, we're going to use speed, velocity, and acceleration, deceleration principles to describe what happens in shapes of graphs. So let's start there. The examiner can ask you about three different types of graphs in relation to linear motion, and they are as follows. A distance time graph, a speed time graph, a velocity time graph. Again, they can ask you to draw these or they can ask you to describe them. When you do draw them, please remember that time is always along the bottom, so the horizontal axis. And please also remember to write your measurements of any units on either the horizontal or the vertical axis. So if you write time, put it in seconds. If you write distance, put it in meters, as you'll gain marks for those. So let's start with distance time graphs. A distance time graph shows the distance covered by a body, so an object or a person, traveling over a period of time. The gradient that the curve shows tells us the speed of that body at that particular instant. And the way you work with distance time graphs in terms of describing them. So if the, if the exam question asks you to describe the graph shown, and it was a distance time graph, you have to identify key shapes in the graph and describe certain points in the graph. And so you're looking for the following shapes in the graph somewhere. If you see a straight line across such as the one that's on the screen now, that will mean the body or the object is at rest. That's your description of it. We've not increased in distance. The time is, is still going. So we're, we're not going anywhere. The body is at rest. If you see a curved upward trajectory, that body is accelerating. So we're rapidly moving in distance over a short period of time. If you see a diagonal, almost a 45 degree line, the body is moving at constant speed. Again, distance is increasing, time is increasing at the same rate, constant speed. And finally, if you see the graph start to tail off, or a different sort of curve arrives that looks like the one on the screen, the body is decelerating. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you a graph of a 100 meter sprinter and I'll show you how to apply those shapes to describe the graph. So you may be presented in an exam with something that looks like this. Here is the graph. And you might think, how am I going to describe this graph? The, the question is asking me to describe the graph. How do I do it? Well, the first thing you need to do is look for the shapes. And the way to do that is to plot points on the graph so you can identify where the shape starts and where the shape ends. How we would recommend you doing that is as follows, using letters. So I've clearly plotted letters roughly of where the start of one shape begins and the end of it finishes. And then we can start to describe our graph. So my description of this graph would be the following. From points A to B, initially 
there is the body at rest, but it moves towards acceleration. Okay, so my description of A to B would be acceleration. From B to C, you could argue either acceleration, but it's starting to become that 45 degree angle. So there, it's technically moving towards constant speed. So either acceleration or constant speed between points B and C. C to D, as you can see, accelerates initially, but then it curves off massively. So it's starting to decelerate. And then D to E is deceleration moving towards rest. Okay, so I would get four marks for describing A to B, B to C, C to D, D to E with what I have discussed. The second set of graphs are speed time graphs. Apologies, this next statement should say a speed time graph. So a speed time graph shows the speed a body or an object travels over a period of time. Whereas before we were looking at the speed of an object, in this graph we're looking at the acceleration of a, an object or a body. And there are just three shapes you need to look out for. The first shape is a straight line. Now previously, that was a body at rest, if you were doing a distance time graph. However, in a speed time graph, a straight line means constant speed, constant acceleration. And then the two others are very similar to what we've done before. So we've got rapid acceleration, and we've got deceleration. So they're the three shapes you're looking for. So again, if you're asked to plot a graph of a 100 meter sprinter on a speed time graph, it may look something like this. And again, what we will do, if the exam question asks us to describe the graph, is we put some points in. So it will help us describe the shapes. And then we're just looking at the shapes. So to start with, we've got acceleration. We've got mainly acceleration, but it's starting to slow down. So you could argue there's a bit of acceleration and deceleration in, in between B and C. Well, C and D is constant speed, or constant acceleration. And D and E, we have deceleration. So I'm hoping you're starting to get the idea of how to do this with the plotted points and be able to describe graphs. We have one final set of graphs which the examiner may test you on and they are velocity time graphs. Again, apologies for the next statement, but a velocity time graph shows the velocity a body, an object or a person, travels over a period of time. And again, we're looking at acceleration in terms of what what we're discussing. The shapes in a velocity time graph are exactly the same as speed time graphs. And so we have constant velocity, rapid velocity, reduced velocity or deceleration. With these graphs, you're always permitted to write acceleration and deceleration in terms of those last two curves. So again, if we were given a graph of a ski jumper, so a ski jumper flowing down the ramp before they're gonna take off and jump and make the massive jump before they land in the Winter Olympics. If we look at the velocity time graph for this, well, we start to plot our points and we're gonna describe this. So we've got Rapid velocity, so he's going down the ramp, speeding up. As he nears the end of the ramp, we're starting to slow a little bit, so a little bit of deceleration. And then it gets to the point where they're nearing the very end of that ramp, and there is constant constant velocity, and at the end of letter D the ski jumper would jump off the ramp and make their final jump. There's a big but 
in terms of velocity though. Velocity time graphs can also show a change in direction a body actually makes. And this is where it becomes problematic for most students because it, it requires a bit of thought. If the curve on a graph dips below the horizontal axis, that means the body has changed direction. How to show this? You'll need a T graph this time. So you can see my graph looks a little bit different than last time in the sense that I've got time still across the middle, the horizontal axis, but the velocity line, the vertical line on my graph has two ends. At the top we've got positive velocity and at the bottom we've got negative velocity. Positive velocity is where the graph will show moving in a forwards direction. If the graph line dips below the timeline and moves to negative velocity, well then the object or the body has changed direction. So here's an example curve to show you. So you can see if you follow the curve from zero, the object or the body accelerates forwards until it reaches the top of that curve on the positive velocity end and then the body starts to slow down. It decelerates again and comes back towards the time line. The minute my green graph line hits the time line, that is the point where the body has changed direction. That's very important. It doesn't change direction until it crosses the time line. Once the body has crossed the time line, well then everything is reversed. So, because it's now going in a different direction, downwards on my graph, the body is now accelerating. So it accelerates to underneath the timeline, and slowly the body slowly slows down again, and it decelerates, and the green line returns back to the timeline. So you can see the body has accelerated one way, to a point and slowed down, then accelerated the other way to a point and slowed down and ultimately stopped. Again, that's tricky stuff and that will be covered in a classroom environment where you can discuss those aspects a little bit more in detail because it requires a bit of thought. Once again, thanks for watching. If you need any more help on biomechanics or any other topic, please head to the iSpeakPE channel on YouTube and we will help you further.